Howdy team. Today we're going to work on learning for the Excel certification exam 77727 and we're going to be on part two of domain one. So let me show you that outline for the domain and then we'll get started. The domain one and part two is to navigate in worksheets and workbooks. Now one of the things I want to make sure I do as we go through this learning experience together is define terms you may or may not be familiar with. The term navigate means to drive around, to find a location. We're going to drive through several worksheets inside our workbook. Part one to one says to search for data within that workbook. So let's get started with that. We're going to bring up Excel and we want to search for data. One of the things I want to talk about is cell location and cell naming. For example, if I click right here, I am in column F, okay, I think I clicked right there, and I am on row 9, all right, and I'm going to turn that cell yellow so you know that I'm talking about cell F9, and I also know that the cell I clicked in is labeled F9 because of the top left-hand corner over here. It says cell F9. So that's one thing. And then very often we name columns. You can see how this column is named coffee with a dollar sign and this name, it, column, heading name, is just plain old coffee. So let's look and search for plain old coffee. It should come back cell C2. So what we're going to do, I'm going to click down here in our data and I'm going to stay on the Home tab and go all the way to the right to the Editing panel. And what I want to do is to find and search the word coffee. So I'm going to type C-O-F-F-E-E. -E. And again, just so you know, I went to Find and Search, and it has Find and Replace. This is one way I could replace the word coffee with Java if I chose. But right now, I just want to find it. So let's find coffee. It found it in cell C2, right there. And I'm going to turn that blue. You know, Java it would probably be good to turn it brown. All right, so that's one way to find a term. What if we wanted to find water with a dollar sign? So we would do the same thing. We'd come to our Home tab. We'd go all the way to our Editing panel to Find and Select. We would type the term water. And we said with the dollar sign, right? And then we hit Enter. And you can see that Excel has found cell H2 and highlighted it. It's kind of hard to see that little bit of highlighting, but you can see the fill handle there. So that is one way to search and find different terms and different data in your document. But we also need to be able to find terms in an entire workbook. We right now are on the sales worksheet. I'm down here in the left-hand corner. If I click the second worksheet, I see that there's Claire and Ellen and George. Let's look for George. So I'm going to come back to sales. I'm going to go on the Home tab. I could have stayed on the sales document, but I want to search a whole workbook this time, not just one worksheet. So I'm going to come over here to the editing panel. I'm going to hit find and select, but to find and select, and we want to find, we want to find George, but George is not listed in this worksheet, in our sales worksheet. We happen to know it's an employee worksheet, but we need to tell find and search, hey, we are not just looking in a worksheet. So we come over here to Options, and in Options, we say Within Workbook. And by doing that, we can hit Enter, and Excel has found George, colored George, in cell A5, and it's told us and located George in the Employee Worksheet. So now you know how to find and search for data in your workbook. Well done. 
Now we are on part two of our Navigate in Worksheets and Workbooks. Here it says Navigate, and we talked about that. That's driving around and finding something to a named cell, a range, or a workbook element. Let's start with a named cell. We're going back to our Coffeehouse Worksheet. And in our Coffeehouse Worksheet, over here in Employees, in the second worksheet in our Coffeehouse Workbook, um, we have some cells that have Baker in them. But if you look at this first cell, I've gone ahead and renamed it. And I right-clicked, and I defined name, okay? And I named this Baker. Um, it's saying it's already named because I did it earlier. So if you look here in cell J5, right here, that is our Baker cell, okay? So we're going to color him orange so you know what we're looking at. And we know that cell is named Baker because up in our cell name identifier, up here in the top left-hand corner of Excel, it says Baker. Whereas these others are just the cell name J5 and J9. All right, so I'm going to go back to sales. I could stay on the employees or I could be on the graph tab worksheet. It doesn't matter. But we want to search for Mr. Baker's cell. So we're going to come over here to the home tab, all the way over to the right to the editing panel to find and search. And we want to find, you know what? Let's try go to. Let's see if it will take us to Baker. So I'm going to type in Baker and hit OK. And it took us right to Baker's cell. It filled in Baker in our name range, name identifier over here. And we now know that's cell J5. All right. I'm going to take you back to the sales. And we're going to talk about a range of data that has a name. Over here is the prices of our coffee, our espresso, our water and muffins, and a column for them. And later, we'll use things like this with a name, a range name area, for a formula. Right now, I have right-clicked and renamed and defined this area as prices. So those are the prices indicated for coffees and espressos and waters and so forth. And what we want to be able to do is go to that range named prices. So we're going to come again to our home tab, go all the way over to our editing panel. We're going to find and select, and let's use go to. Let's go to that name of prices. I click enter, and Excel highlights the range and says this range is called prices. The last component of part two is to be able to navigate to a workbook element. And personally, you just need to know the names. So let's play a name game, and I'll show you. We're back at our coffee house data. And one of the things you need to know about are our toolbars. We have a ribbon, which is this whole area here. And we have tabs. File tab is how we save as the first time we save it. But it also leads us to the backstage view that lets us know what information is here and how to protect our workbooks and how to print. Home is a tab. Insert is a tab. Draw is a tab. You may or may not have draw on your um, tabs. I've added that because I use the pens to work with my students at a distance. Page layout. Formulas, data, review, view, how you see different workbooks, and help. The other thing you need to know is that these ribbons are visible on every tab. That's the whole ribbon. And that this, we talked about this earlier, this cell A1 right here that I'm going to color green is here in the Excel name box and that tells us where our cursor and our mouse is setting. Formula box is 
right here. And if we have a formula present in a cell, then this box will read that formula. So, if I wanted to know the average pay of our employees per hour, I would come to the Home tab, go to the Auto Sum, and go down to Average. It will take the average by writing an equal sign, average of the column I3 to I10, and I hit enter. There's my average. And I'm going to go ahead and center that for you so you know what I'm talking about. Well, by making an average formula, I can click on that cell, which is I11, and here in my formula bar is the exact formula. Now, I can also click the cell and see the formula, but knowing about our formula box will help us later when we want to use formula function arguments. And all I did was click the f of x right here, and that brought up a formula function argument box, which will really help you and assist you to use formulas in Excel. The next thing you need to know about Excel, and we've talked about this kind of in the beginning, we name cells by their column names and then their numbers. So this cell right here is C3, and it's named here in the name box. Pages um, allows you to know over here in the far right, you have a pages view. You have a page in page view, like if you were flipping through a book. And then you have a smaller page view, and it's over here on the far right. You can also get there by views. We also have a zoom slider. Sometimes the data you have is a little bit too small to see. You can come over here to the bottom right and click on your zoom slider and make things bigger or make things smaller. And then we also need to remember that this whole Excel file is a workbook, which has several worksheets, and these tabs lead to the worksheet. I hope that helps you identify how to navigate to named cells, ranges, and locate workbook elements, which were the eight basic elements we went through, toolbars, ribbons, tabs, the name box, formula boxes, rows, columns, pages that have layouts and zoom sliders. Our last third portion of navigating worksheets and workbooks is how to insert and remove hyperlinks. We're going to go ahead and navigate and drive out to the web. Let's get started. I'm going to bring up our coffee house workbook. And there's a lot of things about coffee here. I think maybe we need to search for a coffee house. Starbucks is really popular. I hope I'm not bringing, breaking copyright, but that's what I think we should do. So we're going to take here, I'm going to put Starbucks here, and we are going to go ahead and jump out on the web and hyperlink to Starbucks. So I'm going to go to Insert. And at the Insert tab, I am going to go to Insert a link. So I went to the third tab, Insert. I went all the way down to the Links panel, and I clicked on Links. And now it says, where do you want to go? Text to display is if you don't want the URL or the unique resource locator address to show up, but we actually want to go out on the web. So we say we want to go to the web. If we wanted to hyperlink in the document, we would use this. If we wanted to hyperlink to an email address, we would use this. So I'm going to type 
www.starbucks.com. But I'm going to go ahead and use that same address up here in my text to display. Some people like to see the whole web address and some people just want to see the title of the location. For right now, we're going to show you the whole web address and click OK. When we do that, notice how our word Starbucks turned into a blue hyperlink. We can right click that hyperlink. I probably have to save. And we can left click the hyperlink and that should take us out on the internet out to Starbucks. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So what if we realized, oops, we're breaking copyright, we included Starbucks and we don't have their permission and we need to remove this hyperlink. I want to right click it. I want to come all the way down and click remove. Now my text is still available there, but as you can see, I can click on it and it doesn't jump me out to the Starbucks website. I hope that's been helpful. What we tried to do today was go over searching for data in your workbook, navigating and driving to those cells, ranges, and workbook elements, as well as inserting and removing hyperlinks. Don't forget, do your best.